depend only on you. Son of Mary, I depend only on you. Son of Mary, I depend only on you. be seated. As I said at the beginning of the Mass, that this Sunday, second Sunday, or Sunday after Easter, is a very special Sunday. Even in the tradition of the church, is called Low Sunday. It is on this Sunday that the catechumens in the olden days, in the tradition of the church, were supposed to remove their white cloth. The cloth of, that they used on the day, Easter night of baptism that symbolizes light, holiness, and brightness, that symbolizes union with God in their lives. So it is, or it was on this Sunday that they're supposed to remove the cloth. So they're supposed to wear the white cloth all through the week. And you will know that these were the new converts the neophytes, those who were born newly in the church. It is very significant, and I think we can reflect on it too. Where is your white cloth today? Where, where is your white garment that was given to you that you wore on the day of your baptism? Are they still clean, white and pure? Have we stained them? And this will tell us why there is the divine mercy. Because this is a Sunday that that cloth will be made white again, will be cleansed, and will become pure again. Not washed with the water of baptism anymore, but washed with the blood of the Lamb, with the blood of Jesus. So Divine Mercy Sunday, as I said, was promulgated by Pope John Paul II On the 30th of April, which was second Sunday after Easter that year, when he was canonizing St. Faustina Kowalski or Kowalska, his country woman. She was from Poland. And Pope John Paul II, St. Pope John Paul II now, was also from Poland. So he canonized her on that very Sunday. And then he said that henceforth, Sunday after Easter shall be celebrated as Divine Mercy Sunday. And that is what we are celebrating. And the concept of Divine Mercy captures what Jesus did for us in this period of Easter. It is not by accident that Pope John Paul II chose this very name for this Sunday. That what Jesus did was the zenith of mercy of God for humanity. That God, who is God and divine, would stoop low 
to our condition, our ugly condition, sinful nature, and died for us in order to exonerate us from the punishment and also exalt us back to that divinity that we had at the beginning of creation. So, Jesus died for us. That is the mercy of God. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. He sent his only begotten son to die for us. And Paul puts it so beautifully in Romans chapter 8, verse, uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Paul says, God proves his love for us in this way, in this way, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And even in today's second reading, today's second reading, St. Paul, St. Peter captures the same concept. He says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are guarded through faith for the salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So this is what the death of Jesus has done for us. We are now imperishable. We who used to be perishable because of our sins. We are now imperishable. And that is why when we die, there is a resurrection. We do not perish. There is a resurrection of the body. There is the resurrection of the dead. And we are now undefiled. We are undefiled. And we are unfading. We are undefiled. We are unfading. We are imperishable. This is what Jesus has done for us. Because of mercy. Because of mercy. And not just anyhow mercy, but divine mercy. So today, more than ever, the world needs the mercy of God. All of us, we need of God's mercy. Paul will say that we are all sinners. We are falling short of the glory of God. We need compassion. We need mercy. We need forgiveness. We need reconciliation. We need healing. This is what our world needs. This is what our families need. This is what our lives need. This is what our society, our country, Nigeria, needs at this moment. Reconciliation. We need peace. We need healing. We need compassion. We need mercy. Things are falling apart. And the center cannot hold anymore without the grace and mercy of God. So we must become mercy for people as well. We must become compassion to the whole humanity. And we need to feel it. We need to feel this mercy and compassion of God. Mercy opens doors that is what the death of Jesus has done for us. It opens closed doors. It removes fear. It removes anxiety. The disciples of Jesus, as we read in the, first, in the gospel today, that eight days later, they gathered and they locked the door because of the fear of the Jews. Because their master had died. They were afraid. And everywhere was darkness. But Jesus penetrated. 
He came in a new body, the imperishable body. And this is the body that all of us will have on the last day. The imperishable one. The body that will not have pains. Bodies without scares that the scares of Jesus has covered. So he appeared to them and what he said to them is peace be with you. They were traumatized because of what happened just eight days before. The passion. They saw from afar how their master was killed and how their lives were in danger. Many of them ran away. Many of them denied Jesus. They were traumatized. So they locked themselves up. I don't know if you have locked yourself up because of your past sins and mistakes. Have you locked yourself up because of the situations and conditions that you find yourself? Because of family background? Because of your environment? Because of what people are saying about you? It is time for that door to be opened. It is a time for you to release yourself from that fear, from that closed door. Jesus entered and said to them, peace. And this is what he's saying to all of us today. Peace be with you. Peace. It is providential, divine providence, I would say, that we are celebrating Mother's Day on the day we are celebrating divine mercy. Mothers and the mercy, they go together. Mothers and the mercy, they go together. Mercy is compassion. Mercy is love. Mercy is kindness. Mercy is forgiveness. Mercy is peace. And all these things I have mentioned, they are feminine attributes, not masculine. They are feminine at attributes. In fact, in Hebrew, the word for mercy, for compassion, is the same word for womb. For womb. So, when you say that God is merciful, it is a feminine attribute to God. And one psychologist, I mentioned that, I think it was in the past, Jürgen, a, Jürgen, a psychologist, he has divided the human personalities into two. The anima and the animus. And all of us, and then in a, in a drawing, you can Google it, and you will see that he has a human being with two faces. The feminine and the masculine face. And this is who we are. This is what we are. We carry this face. Now, these two faces, masculine or anima and the animus. The anima, the feminine, the animus, the masculine, they carry the attributes, the characteristics of man and the woman. And we know it when we talk about a man character, character and a woman character. We know what we talk about. So he had divided this. And we know that the anima, which is that mother, has the characteristics of love, of caring, of soft-heartedness, of being emotional, of being tender. This is what a mother is. This is what a woman is. So if you are a woman, and if you are a mother, and this side of your face 
of the animal is not strong in you, you ask divine mercy to restore you to your nature. We have women, mothers, who don't have these attributes I'm mentioning now. When you see them, you see the animals. So, this side of being soft-hearted, being emotional, easy to appease. You will see a husband insult his wife, beat her. And he goes to the market and buys her only a chain and that anger is forgotten. That anger is forgotten. I know a man, if you don't use alcohol that will make him intoxicate and forget the problem, what he has, the anger he has against you, ha, he will still keep it in his heart. That is why when men quarrel, they go and take drinks so that the alcohol will soften the heart. But a woman needs simple thing, just a peck and the whole anger and the whole thing that a man has done to his wife is forgotten by the woman. Easy to appease. This is the anima in them, the softness of mothers, of women. The softness of women. And they can easily be seduced. When I say seduction here, it's not sexually. Because even the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, God, you have seduced me and I have allowed myself to be seduced. In other words, you have lured me. So women can easily be seduced, can easily be, 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 be cheated as well. We can use the word. Because of the softness, because of the kindness, people play on their emotions. When Satan, snake, in the book of Genesis chapter 3, wanted to, to attack the first human beings, he did not go to Adam first. Where did he go? To Eve. To someone with a soft heart. To someone that can easily listen to him. Someone that has that caring and tender heart. Fragile hearts. So many women have broken hearts. How many men have broken hearts? How many men will say, you have broken my heart? It's only the women who are saying, you broke my heart. They broke my heart. Because women are more faithful than men. Even in marriages. The heart of mothers is soft. It's like the heart of God. I told you that God, when you say God is compassion, God is merciful. What Jesus has done is only a mother that can do that. It's only a mother that can do that. So this anima in them should be strong. The caring, the loving. And if the, 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 the animals in you, because men also, we have anima too. Even though we are more of animals in personality, even the women who are animals, they also animals, they also have the animals in them. And you have some women that the masculine part is very strong. I'm not talking about the physique, the physique of the woman. I'm talking about the attitude the character of the woman. You have some women that are very strong. I, yesterday I was battling with the CWO about wine. Whether they should buy a carton of wine. They said they will buy two bottles of wine. I said, no, you can't buy two bottles, mothers. Mothers, you have more than two bottles. I said, I will not sell if you don't buy a carton. But then something came to my mind. I remember what happened in one of the parishes in Enugu State, where CWO beat their parish priest. <laughs> and, ca and carried him on his head and took him outside the parish. And something said, Peter, better give them their two bottles of wine before these women will carry you out of this parish and beat you up. 
So I think I was, I was wise enough <laughs> to answer to their needs so that they also will answer to my needs sometimes. That is on a lighter note. Mothers are special. I traveled on Tuesday after Easter Monday. I traveled home for a burial of grandmom. And when I got to Ore, my vehicle broke down with all those traveling with me. And that same Tuesday that we are traveling, my brother's wife and other women in the village, in the parish, they were doing musical ex exhibition, dancing and everything. So my mother's supposed to be there. And uh, when I got home very late, because the vehicle broke down, they brought another one for me from Lagos. By the time we got home, it was late. And I was asking her, how was the dance of your daughter-in-law? I hope you went. She said, how can I go when you were still on the way? She never went for that throughout the day. And many people knew in the village that she didn't go because her son has not yet arrived. These are some of the sacrifices and pains that mothers do for us. They carry our trouble. They carry our pains. That's why I say they do what only God can do. Men won't do it. The animals is very strong in us. We are heroes. We are fighters. Man, be strong. Even as you are training your Children, boys and girls, the men among them, you are training them to be strong-hearted. Face the, the, the enemy. Fight. Carry the gun. Stand up as a man. You are energizing the animals in the man. Mothers are special. They are wonderful. I have some acronyms from the word mother that I want to sh leave behind and I will conclude with them. And M, M, which is the first letter of mothers, M. I said mothers are models. They are models. Mothers are modesty. Mothers are merciful. Mothers are merciful. Even as children, as we are growing up, we we'll commit crime. Our fathers, we father, we carry stick, waiting for us in front of the door. Our mama will open back behind the door. <laughs> the man will be standing in front, waiting. He didn't know we we're already inside the room. <laughs> That is what God does. When people close doors against you, he opens a door of mercy. Mothers open doors of mercy for their children. It's not only me. I know that many of us, we have this experience of mothers opening doors of mercy. They are merciful. Mothers have mouth. M is mouth. I know you'll be thinking I'm going to talk about they talk too much. The diarrhea of the mouth. Yes, they talk. But mothers use their mouth for evangelization. When Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared first to women. And it was the women who went back to Peter and the apostles and said to them, He is risen. He is risen. We went to the tomb. And we met him not inside. He is the reason. The mothers. Use your mouth as a mother to bless. To bless your children. To bless your husband. Don't use it for bad talks. Negative talks. Gossip. God has given mothers powerful voice. Powerful mouth. The mouth proclaim, to speak, to speak. And we must listen to them. Husbands, listen to the voice of your wives. 
the voice of your mothers. So mothers dress modestly, moderately. Moderate or moderation is another attribute of mothers. A virtuous woman has the virtue at the middle. No exaggeration, no excesses. Be content with who you are, with your husband, with your family. You don't enter into competition with any family, with any other women. And if you're a mother, know who are your colleagues, your friends, who you associate with. So many women have destroyed the family of others. Modesty, moderate. The O. The O is mothers are organized. Mothers are organized. Mothers are orderly. Mothers are oxygen. I want you to know it, mothers. You are oxygen. The energy to your husband. He comes home devastated, worried, anxious, no salary, no good uh, business, you should become the oxygen for that man to stand up again. You don't add trouble to trouble. Mothers are oxygen. And even in the parish, they are the oxygen of parish. They are the oxygen of the priest. The energy for this parish to be moving. So many women are working hard here. And contributing in so many ways. The oxygen to your children. If you pull oxygen out, if you remove the oxygen, whether artificial or natural, all of us will die. So that is what mothers are. So many families are in darkness, in shambles, because the mothers have died. So just know who you are and be that oxygen and orderly person in the family. Mothers are trustworthy. They are truthful. They are tender. They are teachers. The first teachers of faith are mothers. Come here every Saturday, every Sunday evening by 4 p.m. You will see so many mothers bringing their children and leading them to faith. I don't know where the fathers are, but you see the mothers every Saturday, Sunday, you will see them bringing their children to church, to catechism, to prayer class. And they even teach them at home. So mothers are first catechists for the children. Even St. John Bosco himself, his mother was his first catechist that taught him about faith. So mothers, teach your children about faith. Be their teachers. Not only in the academic school work, but also in the faith. Because if they misbehave, you will be the first person to have the broken heart. You will be the first to cry. You will be the first not to sleep. You will be the first to worry about them. So be the first noun to educate them, to teach them, and also teach your husbands. The which there is hope. Mothers give hope where there is hopelessness. Mothers are hospitable. Mothers are homely. As I said, any home where there is no mother is not a home. Mothers make house into a home. They turn house into a home where everybody feel at home. Mothers, let your house be a home. Give peace to your husband. Give peace to your children. Give peace to your in-laws. Give peace to your in-laws, your mother-in-law. Welcome them in the house. Make them feel at home. So many women, is only their mother and is only their own siblings 
that they can enter their house and feel comfortable. Once it is their husband's sister, brother, there will always be fight. Why? You can understand your own mother and forgive her. What about your husband's mother? She's your mother-in-law. So we are speaking for them today that you too will care for them. Especially some of you who are keeping malice. There are so many women here that they don't talk with their mother-in-law. They don't call them on phones. They are in enmity with them. This kind of women, they are not mothers. They have the animals in them very strong. They need to soften their hearts. So be ho homely. Be honest. Be humble. Be humble as a mother. As a woman. God must have blessed your husband. Bless you. It is the grace of God. Be humble. Associate with the lowly. Associate with the lowly. Lift people up. Be a lifter. That is a woman. A woman is a lifter. Lift other women in business, in character, in prayer, in spiritual life. Lift them up. Be a source of inspiration. And the E is that mothers are economical. They are best managers in the house. You can give them 10,000 and they will manage. So many men are into betting, into pool. Babi Jebu. That's what so many men are doing. Using their salaries, their business money. Every day you see them with a pen and one paper. No, I used to observe some men look at their pockets, you see pen. It's for Babi Jebu, it's for betting. And these things are draining, draining their finances. And they will give their wife 10,000, 5,000 to cook soup for six children. So, fathers, we have work to do too. So, mothers are managers. They are emotional. They feel the pain of people. Mothers are endurers. Endurers. So many women, you may see them here. Makeup, tie wrapper. But if you open their heart, they are bleeding. They are passing through pains caused by their husbands, caused by their sons, by their children. Mothers are passing through difficulties. So we are challenging men today to love their wives, to care for them, to make them happy. A day like this, no mother here should enter kitchen. I repeat, yes, yes. If you are a man and you don't know how to cook, take money, Take your wife out. Before now, you have been taking her out before marriage. Today, take her out again. Take her out. Let her enjoy. Leave the children in the house. Take your wife out. Children, celebrate your mothers today. Don't allow them to stress. Do anything today. Do it for them. Do things for them. Show them love and care. Cook for them. Serve them. Let the husband carry food and bring to their wife's table today. And feed them if possible. Yes. And feed them if possible. A group of men 
decided to surprise their wives, their friends. They say, let's surprise our wives. And they say, you have to send a beautiful text message to your wife, everybody. And let us wait for the reply. Everybody, all your mouths go, Piam, honey, you are the sweetest in my life. You are the water in my desert. You are the sugar in my tea. You are so beautiful. Your beauty never fades. So many, 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 many things said about them. And come and say reply, Pia, honey, thank you. I appreciate, Papa. And one man only came, Pa. Papa maker. <laughs> I hope you have not pregnated another woman. Oh. This one you are telling me. Because your wives will suspect you today. Oh. If you have not been doing this kindness, she will be, this one, this man is doing this. I hope he doesn't have a mistress somewhere or something is not happening. They, they may be surprised. But this is how the life is supposed to be. Not just today, but we are reviving it today. Love them and care for them. Show them that kindness. Serve them. Wish them well. Don't break their hearts. And I say, any man that beats his wife is a weakler. That man should be beaten. And I want to tell you women, don't think men are strong the way you see them all. If you stand your ground, the man will flee. For those that their wives are, those that are beating their wives. One place, again in Enugu State. I know that China and the others from Enugu State are not happy now. The woman was beating the husband. A woman now beating the husband. I was, this was not that they told me. We were there listening. And the man was crying inside the room. The woman locked the door. The man was crying that we should come and save him. Oh. <laughs> please, if your animals as a woman is too strong, please soften it. Reduce. Reduce. And care for your family. And talk well to your husband. The women, the final thing is that the women are responsible. They are. They are responsible. They are revivers. They are life givers. We all need mercy in our lives. All of us, we need mercy. Today is Divine Mercy Sunday. I don't know what your past may be. I don't know what your sin may be. But I know that there is no sin, there is no mistake that is greater than the mercy of God. This is a day for you to come back to God. Go to confession. That is the seat of mercy there. You no longer receive holy communion because of one sin, because of what mistake. I tell you, this day is inviting all of us to approach the throne of God's mercy. Whatever that may be, go and reconcile with God and begin a new life. Amen.